Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zard of Chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we're following opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we'll talk about I think a very important uh, subject in chess. Today we'll talk about how to learn uh, chess openings in a proper way, how to learn really uh, chess openings in a fast way because it seems to me that uh, many players for instance they make the same mistake for instance they play too many games they play basically just play games through the day and even when they start to um, study some openings then it seems to me that they waste time uh, because they make uh, the same mistakes over and over and uh, the main mistake I think that you can make in an opening is to change openings so you should really choose first of all an opening maybe you uh, you saw a great game by Magnus Carlsen. He played maybe I don't know the Lasker, the Pelican, or the Sveshnikov Sicilian. Okay, you can uh, you can choose it, but really stuck to this opening because uh, one of my friends uh, from the USA, a Brock Henley, he's really killing me. Every day he gets a new opening. He he saw maybe Magnus playing a Sicilian, then he tries the Sicilian. Then he saw him playing maybe the French defense. Then he's uh, trying the French defense. If you uh, just could notice, you have maybe spend like uh, 40 hours and you learn to French defense then you got crushed in the French defense uh, and then probably you're not satisfied with the outcome and then you start to make new opening to uh, maybe you try a Sicilian but I still would uh, continue with the French defense because you have already spent the 40 hours on on the French defense and uh, still you uh, can make improvements in this opening so at least you know something about this opening so uh, as I said first you should choose an opening if you have to really sort an opening repertoire you have to have like uh, against d4 I, I'll play the King's Indian for instance against e4 I'll play the French defense and similar ideas and see against c4 I go symmetrical I'm not suggesting you which openings you should play but really choose an opening repertoire if you are e4 player this is my suggestion for beginner uh, play e4 if you're d4 play play d4 then in the later stages of, um, when you get more experience then you can maybe uh, choose to play e4 and d4 but th you really need to stuck it with one particular opening line uh, and one particular opening from uh, from black's perspective against d4 or e4 so this is my suggestion if you if i may suggest you some openings uh, for black uh, i i will play always uh, the sicilian against e4 and maybe the nimzo indian or the king's indian against d4 so but okay you don't need to use that you can maybe play your own openings uh, but as i said really choose them and uh, analyze them even more deeper than than you um, than you have already so uh, reading and uh, watching videos is of course uh, very important it's also very logical in my opinion i even think that watching videos is much better than reading books because when you read books then you have to have always a board uh, by the side then you may get may get distracted uh, then you don't uh, then you have maybe uh, left something behind uh, you don't uh, saw maybe a sideline when you watch videos i think um, you can maybe set up a board for you uh, at home and then when you're watching the video also try to analyze maybe with the stockfish engine the particular lines and uh, but okay this is uh, my suggestion uh, you have now many videos i think on youtube i've also made some opening preparations for you for instance i've created many videos of this king's indian and also the nimzo indian uh, from black's perspective against d4 and also this hyper accelerated dragon sicilian defense uh, against e4 so now we come to a very important part i think uh, there is uh, one model that uh, worked for me first i watched always this grandmaster game this this top grandmaster games like uh, gary kasparov games uh, magnus carlson games this lila c0 stockfish engine games and then when i used to play uh, the openings i really split these openings into fragments so for it means when you play for instance with e4 then your opponent maybe plays the Sicilian. Then he, uh, there are many sidelines of the Sicilian. For instance, you have this um, French variation of the Sicilian. You have the Nidorf, the Chevening system, maybe the Dragon Sicilian. For every of these openings, you have to have sort of a cornerstone. The cornerstone can be, for instance, we're playing against the Dragon Sicilian. Well, then our cornerstone is the Yugoslav attack. This is our uh, really main subject how we gonna face uh, this uh, very important uh, opening this dragon sicilian so now 
uh, we have to be familiar with this common ideas of the Yugoslav attack. So this has to be really sort of a system. And when you uh, when you play chess, uh, when you have really an opening repertoire, then I think you have like 100 systems. I've mentioned that in one of my videos before. I don't think that uh, this number will be higher. I think you can really study 100 systems. So it means uh, we have e4, our opponent plays uh, c5, we have knight to f3, he goes into this dragon Sicilian, then we go for the Yugoslav attack. He goes in the Nidorf, we go into an anti Nidorf. So any any of the system you have to write for you down and then really apply them. And the, when you're applying these systems, when you apply these uh, cornerstones, then you have to be familiar with one particular game. So I wanted to show you how it worked for me. Uh, here is one opening I, that really bothered me. It was the Peterson variation of the King's Indian. So let's see what happened. This was my cornerstone, sort of. Uh, it was the game between uh, Vladimir Kramnik and Gary Kasparov. So d4, knight to f6, uh, c4, g6. I'm gonna skip this opening preparation a little bit faster because I wanted to show you the point now what I meant here knight to f3 and after e5 now we have d5 the Petrosen. so I uh, have written this uh, down for me after the move d5 we have the Petrosen. I lost many games in the Petrosen. now I really want to study the Petrosen even better so this is now our cornerstone uh, we have uh, now a5 which I learned why that uh, move is very important because we want of course to block uh, the queen side we are not allowing some uh, b4 pawn breakthroughs and now after bishop to uh, g5 we have h6 by Kasparov and h4 by Kramnik knight to uh, knight to h6 we have castling bishop to d7 knight to uh, d2 and now knight to c5 after b3 here Gary Kasparov played really on a great opening preparation it was the queen sacrifice after knight takes e4 bishop takes knight takes c3 and here uh, rook takes uh, d8 and after rook to uh, c1 uh, knight takes a2 here I want to uh, I want to stop I don't want to show you the whole game this is now a position which is I think playable for black although uh, without the queen but still with all of this all of uh, this eight pawns on the board so i wanted to show you now one of my games how i played uh, in a similar way but my opponent played different move order but i always memorize this game between vladimir kramnik and uh, gary kasparov here uh, i played uh, this similar idea here after the move uh, d6 uh, e uh, e5 d5 uh, a5 very important move and now again this Petrosian system h6 bishop to h4 knight to uh, a6 we have knight to d2 and now knight to c5 it's really similar to this game after the move b3 still i cannot play on this uh, queen sacrifice because the difference between this game by Gary Kasparov and this game is that the king is still in the center so it means this bishop on e2 is protected so so far I cannot go on the queen sacrifice so that's why I decided here to delay the situation a little bit with the move bishop to uh, d7 here my opponent tried the immediate flank attack I tried rook to e8 which comes with the idea if this center opens then the king is of course still in the center b4 a takes b a takes b knight to a3 and here my my opponent tried rook to b1 i played now c5 because i wanted to close the center uh, and now my opponent tried d takes c6 i tried b takes c6 and now he finally castled so now because i was aware of this game between uh, vladimir kramnik and topal in which here in this particular moment after the move b3 gary kasparov uh, uh, Gary Kasparov sacrificed the queen. I also played now finally the move knight takes e4. So after knight uh, bishop to d8, we have knight takes c3 first. The queen has to cover the bishop. So you see, it was very important for me to wait white uh, to castle. And now I simply took the rook. Uh, we have bishop to uh, a5. And now I brought back my knight on c3. And now after uh, f3, I played e4. So I think I have now here in this position a very comfortable game i played c5 he played uh, b5 i played knight to b4 and now after bishop to c7 we have bishop to uh, e5 so still this is uh, playable and now i have even possibilities to break through here my opponent tried f4 and basically make made a mistake because we have now the opportunity to play bishop to d4 so as i said this game i took as a cornerstone i 
knew that this maybe is possible to sacrifice the queen. Here in the, in the game my opponent tried a different move order but still the main strategy remains. So you should be really familiar with the strategies in the game and also in the uh, with the tactics. It's really really important. Here is also uh, one example how I prepare for from white perspective. I play for instance of the d4 move so 95% of my games I play d4 so I'm a d4 player I choose to play d4 and I want to be really familiar with many of the sidelines uh, of this d4 theory so I play often this knight to c3 we have now this semi-slav defense uh, in which uh, now black basically has two good choices he can uh, take here d takes c4 going into a check variation in which i'll play probably a4 never allow here uh, black to uh, play the move b5 and cement his c4 pawn but still this um, um, move a4 is again sort of a cornerstone for me now uh, the main theory would be to play bishop to f5 i play e3 e6 so after bishop to c4 bishop to b4 you see queen to b3 this is now the setup that i know my main idea is here to get rid of this bishop with knight to h4 ideas so that's why as i mentioned here also you have to be familiar with the strategies it's not just uh, to learn these openings by uh, by heart you have to be familiar with uh, the main ideas of the openings here in this um, particular uh, in particular variation it's about the strategy uh, the strategy here is to chase bishops so but okay here after the move e6 for instance i often play this uh here for instance if my opponent doesn't play here this d takes c4 idea if he plays something like e6 i most often go into the exchange variation c takes d5 after e takes d5 i like to play this move queen to c2 which is part of my opening preparation but again you have to realize the strategy of this particular uh, game now you should really know when you play from white's perspective against this setups that you should probably use the minority attack so here the main strategy is the minority attack with b4 a4 b5 a5 moves in order to split this pawn chain create some weaknesses because there are always these weaknesses maybe c5 here if we split the pawns, then maybe this pawns could be, be no, also an object of our attack so as i said when we have this cornerstone when we start from a picture sort of we have really a picture of an opening then you have to be really familiar with the strategy and th that's why i think you can watch really many of these videos now on youtube there are great great uh, chess channels like chess network i uh, i really liked uh, jerry from chess network uh, he really explained many great openings and also um, the st louis chess club so i believe that every of these uh, youtube chess channels are great because uh, everyone brings something uh, to chess uh, everyone is helping out uh, with these videos and basically the good thing is we can watch uh, every every uh, every of this video for free so that's why you should as i said search maybe you you're bothered by a french defense then try to find a way how to beat the french defense you're annoyed how to play against the knight of i think now these days you can find really uh, great great videos and great open opening preparation so here i wanted to show you also uh my preparation again uh, against the moroxy bind i was always troubled a little bit about uh, this moroxy bind setup so i'm gonna skip a little bit faster i most often play the hyper accelerated rank sicilian defense here after move knight to f6 knight to c3 still common theory here d6 i most often take this uh, knight to d4 and now a5 uh, creating sort of a blocking system i want to move a little bit faster because now i want you to show you the position that i want to reach this is now the position to create this blocking system with the move knight to c5 and a5 and now after rook to b1 uh, e6 we have a rook to a d1 i play very often the move bishop to e5 because in one particular book i read uh, a very nice tactical line if white tries here the move knight to b5 so i read that in a book this is my cornerstone of the of the 
of the Maroxibind, it's possible to go here in a very active way. Uh, here, queen to h4, after g3, we can sacrifice him. After queen, to, queen takes g3, king to f1 has to be played. And now there is even this tactical shot we can try, knight takes e4. But okay, your opponent does need to go into this uh, tactical preparations. Uh, he doesn't need to play here this move knight to b5. That's my pawn. And probably you got this feeling sometimes in chess when your opponent gets out of your preparation, then you don't know what to do. That's why it's very important to know the strategy uh, after the after the opening. Here, uh, after uh, potential bishop to e5, your opponent could try maybe to go g3 uh, here to cover this diagonal. Now it's really time to realize new weaknesses in the position. And one of the main strategical goals against the Maroxy bind is to play maybe here f5 or try to crack the position with the move d5. But as I said, you you don't have to really study uh, so much of opening theory. You have to be familiar with the strategy. And uh, when you have this cornerstone uh, database, sort of, then you really have a good system. And I think you can move on from, from this particular point and really uh, have a better opening preparation. Even if uh, you can learn these openings in a faster way because... Um, uh, opening preparations is uh, is important but it's really not the most important thing you see here after g3 your opponent can get out of this tactical mess that you have prepared with queen to h4 now i think here a good way is to proceed queen to e7 maybe rook to d8 then maybe even try f5 pawn breakthroughs or if the position allows it for instance d5 pawn breakthroughs so as i said these are the main principles i think uh, uh, this is very important for you. So first of all, as I said, choose an opening. Very important to have an opening repertoire. So you need two or three good openings as black. Choose to play d4 or e4. Read books, of course, and watch videos. So watch games by top grandmasters on computers. Make these games sort of your cornerstone fr from which you will continue, <coughs> from which you have nice strategical uh, plans nice strategical motifs sort of and of, okay uh, as i said when you play these openings very often you will be familiar with these deeper sidelines you'll know more and more so when you maybe build sort of a system i think you have like 100 uh, pictures in your head and i think everyone can memorize 100 things so it will be maybe tough for you to have a good opening preparation but still if you work hard i think it's possible uh, to build really this 100 systems that i've uh, that i've explained here and um, as i mentioned in one of my previous videos you should really uh, take your time for t uh, for openings because um, um, i've seen now also many times these mistakes that players just uh, know these openings by heart and then you maybe make sort of a move uh, which uh, which he hasn't uh, seen in his life and then he gets all sweaty he, he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know what where to continue where to attack uh, where's the weakness so the strategy behind the openings is much more important than just these moves because for instance as i mentioned here also in this game uh, here in this strategy in this uh, uh, opening preparation for instance against the Petrosian my main goal is to sacrifice the queen which is really incredible that basically a uh, uh, sideline of the Petrosian that you have to sacrifice the queen so in my game it worked for me because uh, I have here I think a decent position with these two powerful knights with these rooks uh, so as I said the game Kramnik uh, Kasparov was really sort of my cornerstone and now I think I have a good good system against the Petrosan defense so okay I hope that you realize these ideas try this out sometimes uh, try to see these good games if you want to uh, know more about openings you can also check out my other videos from the basics in chess series here's the link and you can also watch my opening preparations in the Dragon Sicilian and also in this Nimzo Indian setup um, as black so maybe you can try it out and uh, have a decent repertoire as black and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and um, chess is the best of course